Hello, everybody. Welcome to the pod. Let's give it a second. Do, do, do. Hello. Perfect. Okay, cool. We're starting to get going. How's everyone today? All right, let's get everybody on here. But until then, welcome to the podcast. Okay, it seems like it's just going to take a second, so bear with me. But until then, that's just me. We're hanging out. Thanks, babes. How are you? Okay. All right, let's get maybe oh, hello hello <laughs> how are you good how are you oh i'm first, good good <laughs> for first... some reason my my screen was like I, I was trying to hit request to join and it was like it was sticky so, <laughs> the, sorry the first, you're good it's like the first two minutes of just like hello hi, yeah okay. hi. <laughs> yeah cool well how are you good it's been a and you know busy it you know kind of crazy day but good, good overall it's good we got to have lunch together earlier we and, did and i ate yeah. too much <laughs> <laughs> I did. But I'm, I'm excited so, i'm excited for today too uh, we're gonna have a really cool guest on here today yeah i've never i mean we got to talk to him a little bit a couple of weeks ago but i've never seen him interviewed or talk about his background and just how all this came together. So, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think there has been an interview before. Crazy. I know, right? Yeah. Thirty years in business. <laughs> We're see. doing it. We're doing it. We're gonna do it. It's gonna be cool. If if, it, if we get on here, but uh, it might just take a little baby bit of time. I don't think they've logged on yet. So let's just give it a little bit of time. But you can just look at our our faces. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Where is everyone tuning in from? Hi, Tori waved at us. Alan said hello. 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 Let's see. I'll go back through. Let's see. Joe said they joined first. Margo, how's it going, Margo? Color by Mo, uh, Michael Paul. Hi from Ohio. It says Andy is so great. I agree. Oh, that's very sweet. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. I have a little problem here. <laughs> no worries. Just got to flip it the camera around. Oh, yeah. So I get my, my camera. Yeah, no worries. If you uh, should be like a switch reverse side. Let's see. There, there we are. are. <laughs> nice. Good. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. To, see you. Good. Good, Good, to see you. Good to see you again. Wow. Uh, I was looking for the invite and I didn't see it, so I was pushing all these buttons. Also, I saw it share, and all of a sudden, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out perfectly. You're it happened, here. yeah. It ha it, I, like, we've done this a bunch of times, and it, exactly the same hap thing happened to me. It was like, it was frozen, and I was trying to tap it. I'm like, what's going on? So, uh, well, everybody, thanks. this is Dean. <laughs> yeah. Hi. This is Dean from Jatai. How cool yeah. is that? <laughs> Well, thanks for inviting me. I, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's almost like waiting and waiting and waiting. It, it, uh, like a one minute felt like an hour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to do it, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. So, yeah, my name is Dean Wada. Um, I own, I'm the owner and the CEO of Jatai. And uh, I've been in the business for 35 years. So, 1987 when I first joined. When you guys were probably not born, maybe, or some of you guys were, but I, I was nine. I was it. nine. <laughs> oh, you're nine. Okay, I was nine. <laughs> that's awesome. I was not. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But... So I, I've been in the business for thirty-five years. That's, that's incredible. Awesome. 
So yeah, like uh, we kind of, you know, have like our general questions, but we can, we'll see where this leads us. But usually what we start out with is what were you like as a kid and any of those traits that you brought with you to all of the, all of the things that you've created and done over the years? Oh, well, when I was a kid, I was a pretty quiet kid. You know, I wasn't anything, I wasn't a bad kid for sure. I listened to my dad and mom and I was pretty behaved. <laughs> Although I did fight a lot with my brothers, there's four of us. Okay. So we got a pretty good fist fights and wrestling and stuff like that. Uh, that was normal, I thought. Yeah. Um, and where was and then, this? Uh, huh? Where was this? Oh, at a, uh, we were living in Torrance, California at the time. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, so we have three brothers, and one of them is my twin. Oh, and, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, my oldest is four years older than me. My youngest is four years younger than me. And my twin brother is four year, four minutes younger than me. Nice. So four, <laughs> on the four. Apart, four minutes apart. So it's kind of interesting. Yes. Uh, yeah, but my, my childhood was uh, probably a lot of work. My dad was a gardener. And as soon as I was old enough to go gardening with him, I was out there every summer with him. Um, it was seven in the morning till five at night, you know, every day, Saturdays, or Friday, Monday to Saturday, Sunday we were off. And then we come home on weekends, or on weekends we worked in the nursery. He had a wow. ground cover nursery. Oh, so, wow. uh, yeah, we worked hard. Uh, we didn't get to go to the beach or parties and stuff like that. Uh, for the most part, sometimes we, we snuck away, you know, did our yeah. thing. <laughs> was, was that like, was a lot of that, like, uh, was it more like maintenance or was there creative stuff within that too? Like in terms of like sculpting, you know, bushes or more? Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, sculpting, <laughs> they call that butchery. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, I remember my, my dad got fired from one of the houses because we butchered it up pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, uh, no artistic talents came about by doing gardening and stuff like that. A uh, good work was, ethic. Good work ethic. Like, learn a good, yeah. Yeah, learned how to be disciplined, responsible, um, do a good job every time you do something, um, take pride in what you do. Uh, all that kind of stuff. And hey, manage your time because I had to study, you know, do my homework, help my dad, um, and yet get the, the grades I needed and, and accomplish the things he needed. So it was, uh, that was a good learning curve for me. My dad always told me that I'll appreciate all this work when you get older. And he was right. I did, but I missed out on the other good stuff that I wish I could have done. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, so it's that, that taught me a lot. Well, it taught me good hard work. You get things right. Yeah, that was the most important lesson. Um, but in my childhood, I did practice judo as my martial arts. I practiced since I was nine. Cool. Uh, from nine to uh, eighteen years old. Uh, that was that was in between the gardening and the nursery, and you know. At nighttime, every right after work, we went to judo, practice for three hours, come home and go to sleep. Wow! Yeah. So that was like wow. three three nights a week. It's an incredibly active day. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was really strong. Yeah. I only weighed one hundred twenty pounds, but I lifted like one ninety two hundred pounds. You know, I was wow. pretty strong. Wow. Your parents yeah. were you upset? Your parents were trying to tire out all their boys, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, they <it> were. <laughs> like, it's awesome, bedtime. That's awesome. <laughs> like, I think isn't there? It's uh, there in terms of judo. Like, that's there's an artistry to that. I, I imagine, right? Like, in terms of the, like oh. is it, with balance and yes, yeah, it is really an art of balance uh, using the opponent's weight and movement against them. Yeah, so you can throw them. So, you know, in, in judo, uh, a 100-pound guy could throw a 200-pounder if he does the right technique and the right movement. Yeah. Uh, so judo, back in the old days, it didn't matter if you were 100 pounds and your opponent was 300 pounds. You had to compete with this guy. Wow. Yeah. So, so that no was, weight classes. You it's kind like of so bold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very simple, you know. <laughs> There's your opponent. Go kill him. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, it was, it was really, um, I guess in that respect, I was learning how to be creative. Yeah. Okay. I would have to figure out how do I throw this guy? How yeah. do I pin this guy when he looks stronger and bigger than me and faster? Yeah. And most of the time I didn't win. I lost a lot of times, but each time I lost, I learned something and I apply it to the next time I, I met the guy or I met someone else similar to him and I got better and better. So by the time I was 16, I got my black belt, which was one of my highlights of my, my young age. Yeah. I really worked hard for that black belt. And it, to this day, I, I go back towards, I, I grabbed what I used to feel when I was in a competition. And when I was losing or when I was winning, I just felt like it's teaching me how to survive. I guess that was the right yeah. The right lesson I was getting. That's cool. Do you, th do you think you were present of that at that age, or do you think looking back you were more present of it? I was more, I'm more present about now. No. I mean, I, I look back and I reflect on it. When you're being pinned and choked and arm bars <laughs> yeah. going to the ground, <laughs> you're not thinking about, oh, this no, is great. Yeah. No, no, no. That's <laughs> what I thought. Andy O'Brien show. Uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Talk yeah. about this experience. Yeah, I thought that that's what you meant. And I was like, whoa, you were that young and you knew that? I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> that's awesome, though. That is cool. But so, like, those are two really powerful things already that you've mentioned that I'm sure – shaped you into yeah being creative having the work ethic that you needed to see things through was there other things too or um well i guess the other part was you know i went to college and i learned uh, accounting yeah and to become a cpa and uh i learned that i had to study a hell of a lot to pass and it, and i had to avoid any social kind of events because every weekend I had to study every weekend I had to study. And, and that was for three years about. And yeah. so it, it taught me to focus and to compartmentalize my, what I wanted to do in my life. So that was, uh, it, that was hard in judo actually. I'm not that smart. That's, I think sometimes like when it is harder, it, it's, it sticks more, you know, like when you have to, I don't know, I've never been a natural, I don't think at anything. And I think that that's, it's created more of a drive to, to keep going and having to be creative, you know? Yeah. I, I, I think if you earn something, you keep it because no one else can take that away from you. Right. No. I mean, if you're given a degree or you're given a position, but you don't deserve it, you really don't think about it you know you don't appreciate it. right read it you, you appreciate every minute of it and so being in this industry i appreciate every day i'm in it it's That's been awesome. a fantastic fantastic industry um, when i went to seminars as a cpa it was boring <laughs> <laughs> it's more exciting than the hair here. industry is what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> And then I go to the beauty industry and nothing but good looking women walking around and everyone's having fun and curls and color hair everywhere and people yeah. drinking as they go to the booth and you go, wow, this is, this exists. <laughs> yeah. I can't even imagine like, yeah, what, what it was like in the eighties. And so like, tell us, tell us then. So after school you went in, I imagine you went right into accounting or did you like, it, was it, how did, how did you go? Oh. school and, and then get to hair eventually the hair the hair oh, okay world. Uh, yeah well i graduated long beach state uh university and then um i got a job at a cpa firm um then i had to study for my cpa exam and i had to get two years under my belt as an auditor to get my license um so during that period of time, I was auditing a lot of big Japanese corporations, such as Suzuki Motors, Honda Motors, uh, Panasonic, Hitachi. Uh, and then I went, transferred into the small business section because I got tired of auditing. And I started to do the account for Ch Chitai. Okay. And I was their tax accountant. I was their, you know, bookkeeper and all that stuff. 
Well, the guy that was supposed to take over the business was the nephew of the owner, but he uh, he unfortunately uh, had an accident and killed himself. Oh, wow. So because I knew the business or I knew the accounting side of it, uh, the owner asked if I was willing to come in and and become an owner down the road. Wow. So at that point in my life, accounting was was tiring. It was very a lot of liability. Um, and I want to get out. So I said, sure, I'll come over. Uh, and that, I remember that was right after Labor Day, September 1st, 1987. And my dad, during Labor Day dinner, he goes, oh, so you are, you have a kid coming. You have two kids, one more coming. You have quit your CPA career and going into selling scissors. And I go, that sums it up pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and he go, are you crazy? <laughs> did you, I'm like, glad. did you have, like, did you have any, could you have fathomed all that has happened at that point? Did, could you see the trajectory of what it could be? Or or was it no. hard? Oh, God, okay. No, I had no idea. All I knew is I wanted to get out of accounting. It's like running out of a fire, a fire pan, trying to find a place a little cooler, you know, where I can. Wow. And wow. That. So my, my whole thought was, hey, if it didn't work, I'll go back to accounting, but I won't do auditing. I'll do other things, yeah. uh, which yeah. I really didn't want to do. But, you know, this opportunity was kind of intriguing because it was products I'm selling now, not services. I used to sell services. So products, the selling is just the same, just that you got to, you're just talking about different things. And so, um, I started to learn how to market. I started to learn about the products, how they work, why they one's better than the other. Uh, so that was my study. I, I kept studying all the different products out there and seeing what was lacking because we had a manufacturer we could tap into, and I wanted to see if we can find a new product for that manufacturer. And how was that? Was that hard just because, like, did you just fully immerse yourself into the hair world then? And just like, were you going to the shows kind of studying or how did you, cause that like at back then, like there were the shows, were there other avenues that you could, you could be uh, like researching and, and things like that? Uh, not, not very well. I mean, the shows were the best place for me to, to see other products and research uh, new ideas. Um, but there weren't, there were a, no, not a ton of shows at that particular point. There was a few, but not a lot. Uh, so I was really more relying on the previous owner. He had years of knowledge of the industry, and he would tell me all these things about what's good, what's bad. And the one thing that he did tell me when I was there, and I still remember very well, he says, you know, I've been selling hair cutting razors for years, uh, but because the manufacturer... Uh, pretty much undercutted him in, on a particular account. He dropped them. And he went and he stopped selling razors and he started selling scissors. But he kept saying, Dean, there is there's an opportunity. If we can find another razor that's better than what's out there today, we will have a winner. And he kept telling me that. And I kept thinking about it. Well, I never seen a hair cutting razor really in action. I didn't know what the problems were and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, but I do know I was deathly afraid of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like I'm yeah. not trying to cut my well, fingers off today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I go, wow, these blades are are sharp and they they can cut your finger really bad. And who would want to use this kind of tool? And so he goes, well, you know, we're that's what we're trying to figure out. How can we make this razor better? And so one day I was in the warehouse, and we had, we had um, shaving razors. And these shaving razors, the T razors, just like a regular disposable oh, yeah. razor. Yeah. Well, one had a, a mesh guard on the blade. And I go, well, you know, if I can incorporate this blade into a razor handle, that will that'll kind of solve the safety factor, right? Right. People won't yeah. be as much afraid to use it. So I ran into the owner's office. I got it. I got it. I got the best thing. We can use this, ra this razor blade to uh, solve the problem of, of cutting. Someone cutting themselves or cutting their clients. And it'd be different. It'd be on the market. It'd be totally different what's out there. Yeah. 
Well, the next two hours, he told me what an idiot I was, that this will not work because you got to have a hairstyle for the hair, for the hairdresser to cut with the razor. Oh. And I go, yeah. I go, okay. He, taught, he brought up Dorothy Hamill's haircut, where she spins around, the hair flies, and it comes right back to the shape, right? I go, yeah, but if they don't want to pick up the razor, they'll use another tool to cut that hair. Why would they want a razor? Just because they cut it a razor, they want to use the razor to cut it. Yeah. He goes, well, every time you see a platform artist use a product, they want to use the same product they use to cut the hair. Right. And he goes, he's right then. But I was naive. I didn't, I didn't know anything, really. So I said, well, I think we're missing the boat. Not only will we be able to um, provide safety for the razor, we will also provide a, um, a straight razor that doesn't fold. Because now you don't need to fold it. If it's a, if it's a guard on the blade... You don't need to fold the razor shut because you don't. Because yeah. normally, what that happens when you get the folding razor, you're folding because you want to cover that sharp blade. Right. Totally. Right. Yeah. So now the razor's easier to fold. I said, it, it makes all sense, Kate. His name was Kate. He goes, Oh, you're bullshit and go away from me and leave you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I walked away and I was pretty, I was pretty bummed because I thought I had the greatest idea since Sapphire Pie. And then, you know, Unbeknownst to me, he comes in my room and goes, okay, let's send the razor to, to Feather and see if they can make it. I, go, I look at him and go, are you, are you saying you like my idea? He goes, let's just put this razor in a box and ship it to Feather. So he gets his old razor. It's broken. There's two pieces not put together. He gets a masking tape, tapes it all up. I go, that looks like crap, Kate. <laughs> oh, he'll get the idea. And he sends it off. Well, it comes back. We get a, a prototype coming back. Four months later, about four months, wow. and it came back the way the razor looks today. Really, the first way, try. Exactly. First try. This, is, this is the raised the original razor that we that they developed from our our beat up razor that we sent to them. First try. And first try. First try. Wow. Wow. And. And we and then but they had this hole. We go, what the hell is this hole? We didn't have this <laughs> hole. And then it's real small. Goes, well, those Japanese, they got small fingers. They think the American fingers will fit in that. So we said, yeah, but this looks great, right? It looks different. It's like, wow, this is this is unique, okay? And he goes, yeah, there's some potential here. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him. Man, I didn't see no light, dude. So anyway. <laughs> The same color chip. This is, in fact, I found in my wife's barber tool kit. It's like, this oh, it was exactly originally original. that color. Yeah, this wow. is thirty years old. This is wow. thirty years old. When did it become uh, the black as the original, or when did you start introducing other colors? Oh, we okay. So because this finger hole is so small, we said let's make one a little bigger, which is today's current model, and let's make it black okay. to distinguish from this one. So that's how we came black. Nice. And just yeah. recently you did a whole new line of colors of the short. Is, yeah. is the short the original handle then? The short is the original handle, yes. Wow, that's crazy. So we have we have uh, expanded the line, like you said, as far as colors go. But as far as design of the razor, we haven't changed anything. The only thing we changed besides, besides the color is the blade. We have... Now, three options for the blade. We have the standard blade, which everyone knows about. We have the texturizing blade, which you can aggressively go in and cut the hair. And then we have the R-type razor blade that has 40% less guard, so more blade exposure, faster cutting. And the reason why we brought that one out is really interesting is as time went on, hairdressers got pretty good at razor cutting. They got faster at it. They got more confident with it. So they wanted to go faster. But this blade wasn't made for fast cutting. It was made for really a beginner to intermediate hair cutter. Yeah. And so they kept telling us our blade was getting dull. It wasn't cutting right. It wasn't it wasn't sharp enough. So we went back to Feather and said, hey, we gotta come up with a blade that has less guard so that and yet safe and get the, the speed that the people want. So that's when the R type razor blade came about and and we're seeing it growing. 
quite fast now. Yeah. And the word at the at the shows are uh, is getting around. So it's not the blade that got um, dollar; it's the hairdressers got better. So it's a, that's great. Uh-huh. That's great news, yeah, right? That's amazing. That is, yeah. How, yeah. So did it take how did, how long did it take to take off? Did it what like once that you put, put it to market and took it to the show? And also, too, did, did you partner with hairstylists early on to get it on stage, or did you just hand it to some some like people to, to get it out, out there? Real good question. Put yourself back in the 1990s when you had a computer with a floppy disk, right? You didn't have a hard drive. Yeah. Or they were just coming out then. You didn't have emails. You didn't have fax in every office. You didn't have Facebook, Instagram. You didn't have any of those things. So we had to come up with an idea of how do I how do we get this new razor out there and explain it and be able to um, without having to teach a teacher to teach a teacher to teach a teacher, you know, that kind of, yeah, that yeah. kind of process. We created the video. Nice. We created a VHS video. I don't know if you guys you, uh, you heard yeah, it. I remember, yes. I remember. My first yeah, all my first education videos were are were, were VHS, yes. <laughs> yeah. And so that was a great idea. Okay, that's a great idea. Now, how do we get it out there? So we had Japan make a video. It was all Japanese. It was all a little quirky Japanese, you know. It's just, it was it was just a little different. But it was, I would love it was, to see it. Was, <laughs> yeah, I would love to see I it, too. I, I would love to see yeah, it. Yeah, I think I have an original still. But it was visual. So people saw six different techniques on cutting the hair with the razor. And it was beautifully done. So we said, wow, that's all we have right now. We got to make an English one. But let's send out, let's get a list of intercoffiers. And we sent out a letter with the video and the razor. We said, here, what do you think of this? Take a look at it. Use it. Give us your comments. Um, and that's what we've already said. We came back. They came back with some raving reviews on it. They were amazed of the, of the quality of the cutting and the, how it felt in their hand. It was a paintbrush. It felt like an artist painting instead of using a razor cutting. And they were just like going bananas over it. So you go, oh, this is great. So you, to your question, Brian, well, you know, how'd you get it to platform waters and stuff like that? We did a lot of trade shows and at that time, and we would contact the distributor and say, who's, who's going to be the platform artist for that show? Oh, give me their name and address. I want to send them a gift. So I sent them a gift, the razor, the video. I said, you know, this is a new razor. You'll be the first kid on the block. Uh, if you can do some demonstrations of it while you're doing whatever you're doing, uh, great. If you don't like it, throw in a trash can and, and say, you know, thank you. Well, went to the show and everyone had the razor. Wow. Everyone was talking about it. And and so we were selling out every show. We would bring That's in 144 awesome. razors, and they would sell out. So that was probably the most rewarding thing about this whole razor was, yeah, the, the, the invention of it's great, but the marketing of it, the thinking process to get it to the end user was was just uh, an achievement that I never thought we could do that that well. It was just phenomenal. Without That's so cool. Instagram, yeah, without yeah. all that stuff. It was so much harder. And I mean, the thing that yeah, the initial like, reaction yeah. was, no. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. It is crazy. It, and it, I still, you know what? It, I'm glad it went that way because <laughs> it makes it that much more special, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I got to tell you, I, I did mention something in our interview before. The v- VHS was our key education tool, right? Mm-hmm. So we had an American guy create a new one for us, and it went, came out really well. So we sent it out to a video producer, a uh, video tape recorder, people who did about five or 6,000 at a time for us. Wow. And it went out really good for about maybe three years. And then one year, we got a call. In Alabama, hey, your uh, VHS has porn on it. Oh, no. <laughs> porn on it. So I take out my tape, I put it in the machine, I'm looking at it, there's no porn on this. He goes, wait, wait till the fuzz comes up, the snow. Just wait. So I'm waiting, I was like, 
Oh, <laughs> it was oh upside my down, but he knew it was porn. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! So people were getting <laughs> extra. Do you know how many <laughs> their education? Yeah. Do you know how so many? We of had... those, how many of those went out? Do you know? Well, about five thousand of them. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my and, god! And so, what did I do? I didn't have emails to blast to everybody. Hey, you know, send no. them back. I had to call every distributor that, that we shipped to. And I say, hey, you know, we found that this is a flaw, so just send it back to us. We're shipping a new shipment for you right now. And we, we did the exchange, and it went smooth. We had no other uh, complaint about it. Wow. And really? Then, <laughs> no, not one. And then uh, about a month later, a distributor calls, hey, you took away the best thing we could have sold with this razor. The porn <laughs> on there. It was attracting everybody. I go, oh, my goodness. You oh know, that is amazing. And I feel like if you put a, like, blurred out version of that nowadays, I would, I, yeah, that's a whole marketing campaign. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, I wonder, yeah, I wonder if there's like, I wonder if there's like, like two out there and they're like, it's on eBay for 5000 like $5,000. <laughs> It's like the, the rare VHS. Well, you know, it's been so long, but knowing me, I probably hit it somewhere. I know I have a copy somewhere. <laughs> I know I have a copy. Oh, <laughs> but, hilarious. But those are the memorable things about uh, what we did when we launched the Razor. So. And then, so is it like Thanks just, for... has it like just grown? Is it just consistently, I imagine, kept growing and growing as the industry has grown and yeah. like the reach has, your reach has grown with socials and more shows and all that stuff? Uh, it, it it grew, it had a nice increase, and then it plateaued for a while, and then it just kind of meanderandered up. But it hasn't really exploded until last year. It exploded again. We're selling a lot more razor handles to schools. Yeah. A oh, cool. A lot more. That's honestly and, so good. I didn't have yeah. the experience of cutting with a razor until I was two, two and a half years into uh, my career. And when I mm -hmm. watched it happen for the first time, I was like, that's giving the result that I've been trying to get, um, which is why actually my previous uh, son owner that I worked for at the time bought me um, the feather styling razor, gave it to me. And that's immediately when I started to understand haircutting. Uh, so oh, it's kind of crazy to me that my entire career this has been created and there was a time when it wasn't around uh it's such a staple to me i literally use it every day i passed that one that uh my old boss bought for me down to one of the stylists at the salon now and now i have a silver one oh, isn't that a beautiful one it i is. love this one. <laughs> yeah it's beautiful yeah i'm so happy to hear that story because you know i always feel like i need to contribute to the industry I don't want to just sell products to sell. I want to sell something that makes a difference in uh, in the hairdresser's lives and barber's lives. Make it easier for him, make it better for him to to achieve what they're looking to achieve. Uh, and Feather has a, is a fantastic company. They are absolutely a fantastic company. Their products are next to none. So we have the luxury of of bringing out products that are just you know a world class, a plus yeah. products. They really have, I mean, it's, it, stood, stood the, it really has stood the test of time. It's like I came out of school, I guess, maybe five or maybe six years after, which, I, again, it's always, that has always been there. So I didn't even, you know, it's cool to, to see it celebrating 30 years. But there were so many companies at that time that were creating tools that were, really, you know, riffing off of your idea, right? Like I can think of. Uh, the Tony and Guy razor or the co carving comb or, you know, nameless other ones that are no longer there, but the, your original has like, you know, it's stayed. It's, it's, it's uh, proven time has proven it. It's worth, you know, and that you have made a diff a big difference in the industry. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's rewarding. And it's, it's just, uh, it brings goosebumps down all over me. <laughs> just thinking about how, how it's changed my life That's and changed other people's lives. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, you know what? 
this industry has a lot yeah. to offer to everybody. And it's the best industry I've ever seen in my whole life. Even though I did audits with different companies. And I know this is by far the best. So all you people out there who are in this industry, congratulations. It's a lot of work, I know. But yeah. it's freedom, it's too. Cool. The expression itself is unbelievable. And, and I take great pride in, in helping hairdressers and barbers. So. Um, before I go on, I want to just give a shout out to my family. Uh, my daughter works for me and my son, uh, Vanessa Wada. He's my marketing and my, my son, Kevin, is the operations VP. And my wife, she is the VP. She's an officer of my company. So she bosses me around now. I have no <laughs> but anyway, I had to say that because, That's awesome. um, you know, I won't be able to, uh, to live it down if I didn't. And I just have one other person to, to say thank you to is Robert Lopez, my sales, BPS sales. He's like a brother to me. And he's really helped bring another level of our sales and a Stein Razor. So, um, Anyway, cool. got that out of the way. <laughs> no, it's great. It's cool that, like, yeah, yeah you again, like that. It just that just ties into what you were saying. You've you've made a whole difference in your in your whole family that you're able to to work on this project all together and yeah, have been successful and it's great. It's so cool. Yeah, it's a family operation and, and it's so so much fun to be around my family all the time. So, which that's uh, I mean, even that too to think about all those other companies that were that are now owned by someone else you know you've again stood the test of time of staying staying a family run business and not sold out which is which is great it's awesome you know yeah it's gonna be carried on uh we're our company's 72 years old uh so wow. it's, it's it's been around a long time and we have a great reputation out there for being a, you know steady eddy and dependable and trustworthy um and yeah. we have all nice great products to, to to choose from so i love um, the fact that you also have your family involved in a similar way that your uh father who was a gardener had you involved in i, yes. I love that you've carried that tradition in and it's also subtly ironic that it's also in relating to like cutting things <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah. I thought that so was in a way that the beginning. I'm like, oh, there was cutting. There's cutting involved. Like, our, our, yeah, our like kid, there was cutting involved. <laughs> uh, you know, you, now that you say that, yeah, you're right. Absolutely right. You just shrunk um, the tool a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different well, you know, medium, different tool. Yeah. You need the sharp tools, right? A good scooper, yeah. a good trimmer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> good lawnmower blade. I mean, you need all that good stuff. So blades, I guess, is part of my life. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> yeah. That's but, awesome. And so, you know, I don't know if you guys know my company uh, history, really, a little short, brief history of it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Fredwater, the founder, the founder of Jatai, he was a, a man who was on a journey, goal to connect Japan business and U.S. business right after World War II. So my company is, is Jatai, but it's an acronym for Japan America Trading Agency Incorporated. Japan oh, wow. America Trading Agency Incorporated. So he hooked up, Leia's, he, laid, he established liaison offices for Suzuki Motors, for Honda Motors, for Panasonic, wow. for, um, what was the other one? Um, uh, some other large Japanese companies. And he was... Also, very instrumental. In fact, probably the only reason Japan got the Olympics in 1964. He was, on, he was on the IOC committee. Wow. And he was able to help them bring Japan into the world stage, which everyone for the first time saw a bullet train in 1964. Wow. So because oh, of him, they have a statue in Japan. Uh honoring his efforts to bring in the world to Japan or that's Japan amazing. to the world. Yeah. yeah that's, so <laughs> that's crazy. It's pretty yeah, interesting. Knowing, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you, yeah. Like no, hearing the name, I would have never, I could have never yeah. fathomed like the, like how the depth of that. Right. Yeah. I, when I first heard my company's name, Jatai, I go, is that Indonesia? 
<laughs> Malaysia. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. And yeah, no I, idea. I, uh, I just figure it, it was aim at some point, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So wow. I didn't like our company name for the longest time because I didn't like saying it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cool. Yeah. You I like just say J Tai. I just say J Tai. <laughs> <laughs> You're just, is it too late for the rebrand for you? <laughs> uh, well, maybe, uh, maybe my daughter and son can rebrand it. Uh. I don't know. <laughs> For the for the yeah. for the Gen Z generation, just a name change and a whole like logo change. <laughs> yeah. Well, like anything that we've missed that you'd like to share with us, or anything that you're working on, or anything you'd like to share, we'd love to hear about. Um, well, you know, shaving has become a very big part of our industry right now. Um, in, in lining and you know doing all the, I, I guess for the Afro Americans, they have a lot of. Uh, hair lining to do and stuff like that and like edgy art. yeah edgy, yeah stuff like that so we're checking into what we can do to help that process make it easier and better um cool. that's one area we've been researching on and we also are looking at, at and we have other products that um i can say try we're trying to find other products to have a more value or more um, utility for not hairdressers, but I, I didn't tell my, my staff this, but more for nail tech stuff. Oh, very cool. Oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah. I'm just thinking of those areas right now. Um, what else? Oh, and then uh, you guys use Fuji paper, don't you? you what, guys use that? Like a printing paper? <laughs> No, it's a perm paper or a... Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, those little... We, we only... I, have, I, haven't I, don't... Done, I haven't done a perm yeah, in so I've long. done one in a long time. <laughs> but yeah, in the past, well, in the past, yeah. Yeah, so that one is taking off now. There's a lot of new applications for it. Well, not a lot. There's color processing that is used. Okay. That's used for it. So that's really exciting. That's very cool. Um, that's neat. Yeah, so... So we're, we're, you know, as a company, we, we take one step at a time where we had wasted, I would say, three years of our life trying to handle Amazon. Okay. I mean, we oh. spent more time, and our conversations are all surrounding, well, how do we control the pricing? How do we control the distribution with Amazon in a way? It was, it was horrendous. But we finally got yeah. that resolved. And for the past two years, we've been really now able to start thinking out of the box again. It kind of stifled us for a while because uh, if we like don't have our business, like business working the, yeah, Pardon? or all the business, like now, now you're getting back to like creating, that kind of, like you were focused on business, more business stuff for a bit. Yes, yeah, yeah. I was focused on the business that just to get the sales continuing without having to worry about distribution. Uh, distribution was being decimated out there. So now that 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 has been corrected, we are now back on to what we did before, which is trying to find new products, trying to develop new stuff, and and cool. open up new distributors, new markets. Uh, Cosmos Prof was just held last week, and it was a big success for us. We were busy, and we established ourselves as a company that can do social media. Do well, now we want to do Instagram live since I did. Uh, <laughs> You're like, yeah, I'm the yeah, master yeah. at it now. <laughs> yeah, master now. yeah, yeah. All right, and then, you could host these things. And, uh, yeah, so my, my daughter Vanessa will uh, start contacting distributors and start reaching out to do education. We already connected up with a lot of schools now to do that. So it's that's perfect. our next big step. We want to push our education now, and our academy is just full of videos and education that's just awesome for everybody. And and not to uh, close this conversation, but our, our signing racer is 30 years old. We have a promotion going on, and, and Andy, you are our affiliate, right? I am, yes. Yeah. 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 So it's 30% off. It is. So. Link in my bio. <laughs> Link in my bio. That's right. And you will get the 30% uh, you will get 30% plus and Andy gets a, a little cut. Yeah, which is, you know, <laughs> it's honestly, like, just so nice when you're able to actually recommend something that you believe in without <laughs> it being like, oh, yep, we're doing this or we're working with this. It's like, no, this actually 
it works, it's used on the daily basis. Um, and it's just, you know, a good people owned company. So I'm well, here, always you, here for the support and I appreciate uh, you being here today. It's truly an well, honor. Thank you. It was fun. That was, was super fun. Yeah, that was fun. I, I, you know, I'm a stiff accountant and I'm talking to some <laughs> hairdresser. Uh, you no. know, what, what I don't think you're a stiff thing? accountant. No, <laughs> you don't think so? yeah. no, 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 not, not at all. Yeah. Well, let's open up the tax code. Like... Yeah. Oh, I love it. Okay, uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Let me yeah. tell you how to do deductions yeah. or hide money here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like so uh, informative but... to learn to yeah to like a lot of the stuff. A lot of the people we've met, it's like similar paths, but it's different. But it's so interesting, and it plays such a role in what we do. So this was, yeah, this was. I thought this was great. We appreciate you coming to hang out with us. Well, thank you so much. Um, wow, only forty-five minutes. That's, that's pretty cool. Usually, it takes me two hours to talk about myself. True. <laughs> yeah, you did so well. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for having us. Um, I do want to say that also. One of the goals that Brian and ours um, of doing this is to understand the history of the industry up to this point as well. I feel like when I personally got into the hair industry, it was significantly, I had to figure out a lot of why I'm doing or why the industry the way it is, but there were no answers of how that came to be. Um, so I appreciate you shedding light in the way that you've made an impact on the industry and also just the, what we hope to move forward with. So I just, uh, yeah, not to be sappy, but thank you for being here. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I, my, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, it was fun. I had a great yeah. time. Likewise. Well, well, hope little, we get like, to see. Heart. This little heart's floating up. Yeah, yeah people, are like, people are yeah, loving it. <laughs> yeah, I thought someone was flirting with me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that too. Maybe that too. You yeah. never know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting hot in here now. <laughs> I'm just going to pat myself, sweat it off a little. Yeah, yeah. Make the body come here. <laughs> All righty. Uh, well, um, cool. Yeah, hope we get to. Yeah, hope we get to cross paths in the future. For sure. Well, when I when I visit your your town, I uh, definitely will give you a call. Yes, let yeah. us know. We'll take you to dinner. Okay. Oh, that'll be fun. All right. Yeah. Okay. Take care. All right. Alrighty. You too. Good night, Thank everybody. <laughs> yeah. Good thanks night. for tuning Bye. in, everyone. Bye. <laughs>